witness very often half an hour or more. This is a collective decision. In all, for the nine months of the campaign, some 88-0 technicians prepare the ATV for its launch tonight from many different organizations, ESA, Astrium, Roscosmos, and NASA, the two space agencies, and industry. Another center of action tonight, the satellite preparation building. What's going on there? Yes, uh, since its arrival in CSG, the automated transfer vehicle preparation and checkout operations, including all the hazardous operations, fueling, for example, these have been carried out in what we call the S5 uh, processing facility. Now, what goes on there exactly? Well, the ATV is subjected to all the needed electrical tests, the propulsion system, and other pressurized tanks. These are checked out to ensure that there are no leaks. As the ATV was shipped in two parts, remember, they are assembled together here in the S5 facility. I think we saw that in, the, uh, in an earlier film. That's correct. And of, of course, there's something like 500 kilograms of water being transferred to the International Space Station today. They're installed in the S5. We also have a dry cargo installation and flight batteries, all the propellant filling. It all takes place in S5, not necessarily in that sequence. The French Guiana site was chosen in 1964 among 14 possibilities, including Australia and Scandinavia, give you an idea of how, how far they were looking across the world. France wanted to build a new base. Why did they choose here? They found everything they were looking for. Number one, a large opening on the ocean to make a flying both north and east for different orbits possible, and over an area that offers low risk to the population. Yes, uh, and as you mentioned, a low population, a low population density, only 200,000 people or so live in uh, French Guiana. Most of this nation, it's a uh, lush tropical Amazon forest. Also, we're near the equator. We're five... Uh Five uh, latitude north, I think, of the equator, which allows us a launch to benefit from what they call the sling effect. The uh, Earth's rotation get it, gets us more quickly into orbit. Yes, uh, the Earth's natural rotation, in fact, while being on the equator, we already have nearly half a kilometer, half a kilometer per second of uh, translational velocity. So the closer we get to the poles, this reduces to zero. So, so being here on the equator it can be very beneficial, especially for for our GTO missions. Also, no hurricanes. No hurricanes. No, no earthquakes, as they can strike other parts, particularly in the Caribbean. They even found nearby hills where radar and telemetry facilities can be installed to easily follow the launcher during her trajectory. We'll be talking about that in just a moment. The invited guests and the VIPs here are going to be shortly, I believe, making their way out to the terraces. I see the monitors are standing by the doors. Or maybe not tonight. Usually they go out and they can watch the launch from the terraces. There are two of them outside here in uh, Jupiter. Ariane lifts off from the pad, as we mentioned, about 14 kilometers away and passes right over us in Jupiter as she makes her way east. We're coming up on the one-minute mark. And we'll be into the final 60 seconds. You'll hear the DDO call out the one-minute mark in just a moment. You can follow all the action on the website. Remember, Ariane Space... Attention to DDO, attention for moins une minute. DDO and the one minute mark coming up. Top, à zero, moins une minute. And now the guests are getting up at the one minute mark. Usually they, they, they go out early, they go out at two minutes. We're in the final 60 seconds, uh, Simon. All that's left to explain is the ignition sequence. What do we look for? Well, at uh, H0, the DDO will call out Allumage Volcan, the main stage ignition. But at this moment, we don't lift off yet. In fact, there will be seven-second wait. For these uh, seven full seconds, the computers are checking the performance of this main engine as it's functioning and on the pad. If all is well, then, and only then, the order is given to light the two solid rocket boosters. At this point, there's no going back. We will be off. We're off in a minute. We're going to cut away, let you hear the DDO. Call out the final countdown. Enjoy the launch, everybody. A tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Top. Allumage Vulcan. Allumage EAP et décollage. Tous les paramètres à bord sont nominaux. And so we are underway. Did you see at 18.52 local time and right on time, Ariane 5 began her mission, lifting up beautifully. 
showing a lot of power right from the ground here in French Guiana with a lot of fire beginning her second mission of the year, the 2010 ATV going to the International Space Station. Beautiful shots, always impressive for the people at the observation sites around the base, in their cars around the beaches area, and lifting off in her trail of gold. She's making a turn now, she's going to pass overhead. We're about 15 kilometers from a launch pad, and even here you can still feel the sensation of launch. But if you're watching from that close viewing station, which is only five kilometers away, you can really experience that sensation of the acoustic noise from those two solid rocket boosters as they provide right now 90% of a thrust, propelling the launch along its trajectory at ever higher velocity. It really is quite sensational to witness there in Toucan. How many uh, launches have you witnessed? I've been fortunate to witness two from there. Plus tonight, tonight from here. 777 tons is Ariane's weight at liftoff. The DDO is saying that everything is okay on board. She's burning, if you can believe it, five tons of fuel every second. Five tons of fuel every second. 2.5 tons in each booster, plus the core stage, the lower stage, burning another 300 kilos per second. The launcher now following the program in the onboard computer, which gives all the orders, including stage separations, which we'll soon begin to see. We are in the first of four flight phases. We'll describe each in turn so you can follow Ariane. Right now, the first flight phase, the single Vulcan core stage burning with the boosters. The boosters are going to burn for another four or five seconds, and then they will be extinguished, and you'll see them probably, uh, looks like the extinction of the boosters, you can see them falling away on either side, the orange, the orange lights are the boosters flaving out, and the single point of light in the middle of your screen is Ariane continuing to burn. Yes, the DDO has announced the separation of the two solid rocket boosters, and coming at a time at uh, 65 kilometers in altitude. Take a look, Simon, at the left side of your screen. On the upper left, you have the cursor crawling up a line. Below that, some letters and some numbers, A and V. Can you explain? Yes, uh, so looking at the screen, this is Ariane's trajectory. It's showing us how the flight is progressing. The curve, it's a computer simulation of the actual trajectory. And that white dot on the curve, this is the actual position of a launch vehicle right now. There, there are actually two trajectories. One is the optimal trajectory and the real-time trajectory. As long as we're one on top of the other, we're right where we should be, right? Exactly. Superimposed, perfect. So the V means velocity. And right now, we are traveling at 2.4 kilometers per second. And the A, this is the altitude. So now we're at 106 uh, kilometers already. We're out of the Earth's atmosphere, or will be shortly, which means the fairing can be Jettison. There it is, coming right on time at about 110 kilos. We're using a new fairing separation system tonight, aren't we? That's right. Uh, and in the past few years, Ruex based in Switzerland, the Ariane 5 fairing manufacturer, <coughs> they have been developing a new system to support the fairing separation event. In this new system, with the aid of pyrotechnics, the fairing first separates from the Ariane uh, around its uh, circular base. It happens very, very quickly. Doesn't very it? quickly indeed. 56 uh, milliseconds to be precise. And during this time of separation, it's aided by a series of uh, very precisely tuned springs around the body of Ariane. So at this point we can say the fairing has been separated? Only by a few millimeters more. Then a command is sent to separate the fairing two halves. The whole event is over in less than uh, 100 milliseconds. Now they wanted also a new design, a shock reduction system, a low shock. Fairing, yes, uh, uh, exactly. The, the whole concept, this endeavors to minimize the shock environment transmitted to the Ariane's passengers. Today it's the first mission of this system, so a uh, special hello to the whole work team in Switzerland. The new shock reduction system was five years in the making. The fairing separated first horizontally, then pushed up and away laterally. We're in the second powered flight phase, the single core engine burning. Simon, what's the role of the single uh, core stage? Well, the EPC, this is the main cryogenic stage, and it, uh, for some details, it's 5.4 meters in diameter, and it's 31 meters long. It's powered by one Vulcan 2 engine that burns liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. The Vulcan 2 engine provides up to 1,400,000 newtons of thrust in the vacuum of space. And its nozzle, it's, uh, it's gimbaled to, to provide uh, pitching your, uh, pitch your control for the, uh, for the Ariane vehicle. We're doing fine on board, Ariane performing flawlessly. More of the mission in a moment, but for now, the latest news from Ariane Space.
And back here in the uh, flight control room at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Jerry Jason, the lead flight director for uh, this ATV-4 mission of the Albert Einstein on console at this hour, uh, as he will be on docking day on June 15th, now that uh, the Albert Einstein is on its way. We're five minutes, 45 seconds into the flight. Everything uh, continuing to go very well. Uh, the first uh, stage cutoff and separation of that initial stage, uh, which is known by the acronym of uh, EPC, as it is called, which is the Etage Principal Cryotechnique. Uh, that uh, first stage will drop away. You're looking right now at the visiting vehicle officer, Brian Lohman, here in the uh, International Space Station Flight Control Room, uh, seated uh, behind a model of the automated transfer vehicle. Uh, Lohman uh, will be uh, working with his counterparts at the ATV Control Center in Toulouse, France, uh, over the next uh, 10 days to monitor the progress uh, of the automated transfer vehicle as it proceeds towards its link up with the aft port of the Zvezda service module on June 15th. That docking is now scheduled on Saturday, June 15th at 8.46 a.m. Central Time. We'll be providing live coverage of the docking of the ATV-4 to the International Space Station beginning at 7 a.m. Central Time on Saturday, June 15th. As we mentioned at the uh, top of our broadcast, it will take about an, uh, one hour, 38 minutes uh, between launch and the time the solar arrays are deployed as well as the proximity link boom that is necessary uh, for the transmission of data for the ATV-4's final approach to the International Space Station. With that, uh, we'll be returning now uh, down to the Jupiter Control Center in uh, Karoo, French Guiana, with the Ariane 5 uh, having been launched on time and the ATV-4 on its way for more coverage from Ariane Spas of the flight of Albert Einstein. By sites uh, in Australia. We won't be here for the acquisition of Perth. No, this comes at uh, 2 hours and 24 minutes into the mission, but Ariane will be tracked by the others during this uh, broadcast. All of her trajectory has been designed to be followed from the ground, whether by land or by sea. The launcher sending radar and telemetry back, and the network of stations keep constant watch on her vital systems. What is telemetry, Simon? Well, basically, the telemetry is the launch vehicle data that is being monitored, collected, and transmitted back to the ground stations. In fact, uh, there are over 1,500 parameters to measure, all indicators of the Ariane's health and performance during flights. 1,500 parameters. What kind of parameters? Well, parameters such as the, the tank pressure that confirms the nominal status of the propulsion. We've got uh, gyro data that confirms the nominal orientation and attitude of a launch vehicle along its uh, trajectory. There are also accelerometers, strain gauges, and uh, temperature sensors throughout. And they're supposed to record all of our functions. Yes, uh, mo motor ignitions, for example, stage separations, motor shutdowns, all, all uh, aspects like this. Now, some of this data is analyzed in real time, being analyzed right now, and others are analyzed uh, after the flight. Yes, uh, this is how we validate how the vehicle has performed. So you can imagine the, the enormous archives of data which, uh, which we've uh, accumulated. We're waiting for confirmation of the extinction of the lower stage burn. That should be coming up right now. <coughs> there it is on the screen. We have often a couple of seconds delay as the telemetry comes in. Fin de propulsion there we de have the DDO has confirmed de the cutoff of the lower stage engine and the separation of the lower stage and, as you saw, the ignition de of the upper stage. EBS. These are three commands given by the onboard computer in about 12 seconds. We're into the upper stage burn the next powered flight phase. What's the role of the upper stage, would you say? Well, we call it the EPS, and the EPS, uh, it's a storable propellant upper stage. This is responsible for, pro for providing the additional final velocity needed to inject the payload, the ATV, onto its uh, specified orbit. The EPS will now burn five tons of propellant for the next 490 seconds or so in this first burn. 490 seconds, roughly eight minutes. Compare that uh, with the Ariane 5, the ECA version, the other version? Other well, ones? well, in the EPC, the previous stage, and also the ECA configuration, we were burning cryogenic propellants. In this EPS, we are burning monomethyl hydrazine and uh, nitrogen tetroxide. I couldn't is, pronounce that. No. Ah, this is a storable, reliable propellant for this configuration. The fact that um, we were not burning cryogenic propellants on this upper stage, that's why maybe some of the viewers would have seen leading up to the launch, we did not need those 
uh, those uh, visible yellow cryogenic arms on the upper part of the launch table. We're choosing this configuration called the ES tonight because for this mission's particular uh, needs, the EPS is the most efficient means to do, do the job. And we've used it before, right? Yes, uh, it's a configuration we've used previously on the other ATV missions, and we'll continue to use this on the, the Galileo missions uh, due to fly on Ariane uh, starting uh, December 2014. We had a look at the launch zone before liftoff. Our camera is going to go up now to the CVI, another center of action, the Immediate Visual Control Center. What's going on here?